Hey everybody, today we're gonna to talk about Western Governors University and how you can graduate with a bachelor's degree or a master's degree in less than six months. So let's get started. So just real quick before we get started, I just wanna say I have used this strategy myself. I have both my bachelor's and my master's from WGU. The bachelor's I got back in 2013, it's in IT and it took me about five and a half months. I did transfer some credits into it, but I didn't really have my strategy fully formulated until like halfway through the term or so. So I think I could have finished it much faster. And for the master's degree, I graduated with my master's of science in cybersecurity and information assurance just recently in August of 2020. I almost don't wanna say how long it took to graduate the master's because it was stupidly fast, but it, it actually took only 12 days. And I know it seems like really weird and like gimmicky and maybe it's fake, but just listen and I'll, I'll kind of explain the strategy that kind of led me to be able to do that. So before we get too deep into strategy, I just want to talk about Western Governors a little bit and kind of introduce it in case we have viewers who haven't heard of it before. Western Governors is a regionally accredited online university that offers a whole bunch of bachelor's programs and master's programs in business, health, education, and information technology. WGU doesn't have that like traditional quarter system where like maybe everyone starts in fall quarter and they all like go together and finish the quarter at the same time. Basically, like you just apply and then you get accepted and then you register and then you just pick the date when you want to start. And their start dates are like the first of every month. So you can pretty much just start whenever you want to. And the cool thing about WGU is when you register, you pay for like this six month time span that they call a term, and you're allowed to complete as many courses as you can within that term. And the other cool thing about WGU is there's not actually any homework that's required. In order to pass a class at WGU, you have to do one of two things depending on the class. The first thing is called an objective assessment, which is basically just a multiple choice exam. If you pass that, then you just pass the whole class. And then the other thing is called a performance assessment, which is basically kind of an essay that you have to complete. So you complete the essay, you turn it in for grading, and if it gets accepted, then you pass the class. Some classes require both a performance assessment and an objective assessment, but I found the classes that require both tend to be easier. So one last thing before we dive into the strategy. Going back to the objective assessment really quick, uh, just a reminder, that's the one where you take the multiple choice exam at the end of the class. There's actually two types of objective assessments. The first type is just an exam, I guess it was developed by WGU. It's like their own exam. And then the other type is like a third party exam. So for example, this might be like one of the CompTIA exams like CompTIA A+, CompTIA Network+, Plus, maybe Cisco CCNA or ISC squared, like one of these type of vendors. And believe me when I say this, the WGU exam is way easier easier than the third party vendor exams. It's way easier. I've taken probably like 20 of each, to be honest, and the WGU exams are, are way easier. And this is this is key to the strategy. And just an FYI, I made a whole video dedicated on how to quickly pass the third party exams. So check out the link in the description. Okay, let's let's dive into the strategy now. So if you're going for speed, like you want to graduate as fast as possible, before you even register, you need to take some time and pick the actual degree that you want to complete. This seems like a really obvious thing to say, like, of course, you have to pick which degree you want to get. I'm just saying you have to be careful because if you're going for speed, some of the degrees, especially in IT, are filled with third party certs. And those are like really hard and they'll they'll take you way longer than if you pick a degree that has less third party certs. Say, for example, you want to get a bachelor's in IT. I would highly recommend the IT management degree because there's there's actually no third party certs in it. And no third party certs means you can finish it super quick. But let's say you really want to work in cybersecurity after you graduate and you had your heart set on one of the bachelor security degrees. But you look at them and these are like the worst ones to get because they, they have huge list of certs that you have to get and they're they're great certs and the degrees are great but it's just going to take forever a nice compromise to this would be pick one of the easier degrees with less or no third party certs and graduate with that really quick and then after you graduate go and pick the individual like security certs you want to add to your resume and just do those after the fact it just really depends what you want to do but this video is geared around speed so that's kind of what i'm going to talk about so now that you've picked your degree and registered, you'll probably have a week or a couple of weeks before your start date. I'd recommend using this time to build out a spreadsheet for all the different classes that you need to take in order to graduate. 
mark all the classes, whether or not they require an exam, that's the objective assessment, or an essay, which is the performance assessment, or both. If you want to use my template, I'll put it in the link below. So go ahead and uh, feel free to copy that. So now that you have your spreadsheet filled out and your start date has come, it's time to start passing some classes. So first, we'll cover the strategy that I use to quickly pass the objective assessment classes. That is the classes that have that multiple choice at the end. And then we'll cover the performance assessment strategy. That is the classes that have an essay at the end. For the objective assessment classes, before you can even take the final, you have to take what's called a pre-assessment. The pre-assessment is just a practice exam. It's not proctored or anything, so you can take screenshots of it, you can save it, you can do like whatever you want with it. So we're gonna heavily rely on this pre-assessment in order for us to successfully pass the final exam. So let's get started with preparing for C725, Information Security and Assurance. So I don't have this pre-assessment anymore, but I, I found some of the questions uh, on the internet because it's it's just the pre-assessment. So this is, this is what I would do and how I would prepare to take the final exam for this class. So basically you'll open your pre-assessment and then you'll make note of the topic that you think it's trying to cover. So for example, this question, it's clearly talking about password strength and password complexity. And if you have no idea about any of that, like character depth and, and all that, you just have no idea, then you know that you need to write down like, oh, I need to learn about like password complexity and strong passwords. That way you can do like a really focused study session on the stuff that you, you need to know to pass the exam, opposed to just taking a month to go through like the whole material and then trying to take the exam. And in case you're wondering, uh, this love my son is one of the correct answers because it has three clear text dictionary words in it. I would, I would argue this one could be potentially bad. If it didn't have this like junk at the end of it, this one for sure would be bad. But this one's worse because of all the clear text dictionary words in it. So moving on to the next question, which two secure methods should be used to keep track of passwords? Encrypt text files of them on user workstations, store them on a sticky note, share them with a trusted manager, organization approved password storage software. So for this question, you can pull a bunch of stuff out of it. Like for example, you can probably guess you need to know like what encryption is, for example, and then you need to know about like secure password management or secure password storage. You can kind of guess that's going to be one of the topics on the actual final exam. And if you have no idea about password management, then go to the material and, you know, read up on it like target your study for password management. But if you understand this whole question, you can just like move on to the next one, essentially. And the last example, this one's pretty good. So which groups typically report to the chief security officer? Security engineering and operations, physical and software security, audit and incident response, facilities and information technology functions. So this is this is a good question because there's a, you can kind of derive a lot of stuff from it. So even if you get this answer right, you can be aware that there's different domains for example, security engineering and operations is one domain, physical and software security is maybe another two domains, audit and incident response, maybe another two domains. And it can be inferred that each one of these kind of domains may report to like, you know, someone in the C-suite or some kind of manager, for example. So maybe you could look at this question and be like, okay, since engineering and SecOps reports to the C, like the chief security officer, like who do these, who do these groups report to and, and what are their functions? So like, what are all the domains and who do they report to? Like, what do they do? This one's pretty good. You can kind of derive a lot of what may be on the final exam based on this. Again, if you understand this question in, in its entirety and you understand the incorrect answers and you know like what all this stuff is, you don't have to do anything. But say, for example, you got the question right, but you don't really know anything about audit and incident response, then you could take that opportunity to focus your study uh, on there, if that makes sense. So you just want to use the pre-assessment, like every possible part of it, like don't just memorize the answers, but look at the incorrect answers, look at the topics that are being discussed in the questions and every possible way, like figure out like what they may ask in the final exam based on the pre-assessment. That's, that's the big strategy. Once you've gone through the whole pre-assessment and you've, you've studied everything, like you've pulled out all the stuff that you feel you're weak on and you've studied it, don't hesitate and take a long time to take the actual objective assessment, like the final. Because imagine like you took the pre-assessment and you felt like okay about it after like a day or something and you took it and passed it. Like imagine like hesitating and taking like two weeks to like overstudy. You just like wasted two weeks when you could have passed the pre-assessment in like a day or two days or something like this. There's not really that much of a penalty like if you were to fail. I think you can fail like two or three times before you have to start paying like $60 for each reattempt. But for me, for example, uh, let's see, I actually, I actually 
took like the very very first day that I my classes were opened up I took I took and passed like both of these classes on the first day um it took like Maybe I studied for probably like eight hours for this one, um, but I, I passed both of them the first day and it saved a lot of time, which is part of the reason I could finish the master's in 12 days. Um, but yeah, that's the strategy for passing objective assessments. Now let's talk about how to quickly pass the performance assessments or the essay finals. So let's say we want to complete C726 over here, the cybersecurity architecture and engineering class. Basically for any classes that are a performance assessment where you have to write an essay, you're going to get like some type of file like when you log into the portal and go to the class, you're gonna get you'll get some screen that looks similar to this. This is made up, by the way, because I, I can't show the actual rubric. I think that's like illegal. But you'll get something that looks like this. You might have like a couple attachments, like a, a case study that explains the problem that's happening. And you may get like a, a diagram or something. If you're if it's like a technology course, you may get like a diagram where you where you can see like the network architecture or something. There'll be like an intro and like a scenario kind of describing your role in this this scenario here. The strategy for this is like really simple. All you have to do is like go to the requirement section and just like copy this and then open up, you know, Word or Google Docs or whatever. And then just uh, essentially like paste this in here because these are the points that you're going to be graded on for the performance assessment. So basically you just straight up paste the requirements and then you just like answer them in here you just answer them like the best you can if you don't know what it's talking about if you don't understand something you just have to go actually go through the course material like a normal person but to do it quick you just paste the requirements and then you just answer them straight up and then you submit it for grading so as you're working on your performance assessments i just want to say don't take a long time to like try to make sure everything's perfect and take like three weeks to write the paper it's it's really not necessary just paste the requirements and then do your best to answer them and then submit it. And then once you submit it, there'll be a, a human who actually will grade your paper for you. And then they're going to return a rubric to you with your score on it. And they're going to point out like exactly um, if you missed a spot, they're going to point out exactly what it was. So for example, these are the, the four areas that you have to be sufficient in, I guess, to have your paper accepted, these four areas and the requirements. So say like you, the intro was good, the process overview was good, but your proposed solution was like on the right track, but it wasn't quite there. And then maybe you didn't need sources or your sources were fine. Say you took like a day to like write this paper and submit it and then come to find out the only thing that you need to fix is just one area of it. Compare that with a scenario of you being like really meticulous and taking two or three weeks to write out the paper and then submit it and then it gets accepted the first time. It's still kind of a waste of time because if you submit it once and it gets failed and then you submit it again, you can still finish the class in like five, four or five days or something. And most of that will be waiting for them to grade your paper. So basically what you want to do for performance assessments is just finish it as quick as you can and submit it fast. And then while you're waiting for them to grade it, just work on something else. And that's pretty much all there is to it. If you stick to the strategy and then pick a degree that doesn't have too many third party certs, you can definitely finish before six months. So if we were to do some quick math here, so the master's degree took me 12 days to finish and it has nine classes. So 12 days divided by nine classes. It took me like each class took me about 1.33 days to finish. And looking at the bachelor's degree, this is the bachelor's from WGU, uh, the IT management one, which doesn't have any third party certificates. It has count of 41, has a total of 40 classes. So assuming you came into this program with absolutely nothing like no credits, no certs or anything like this, and you have a term of it's about 180 days, like half a year. So we can say 180 days divided by 40 classes means you have um, you have to complete classes at a rate of one class every 4.5 days to finish a complete bachelor's degree in in six months which i think is is definitely doable because the bachelor's performance assessments like the essays are quite a bit easier than the master's ones at least in my experience i should say just as a disclaimer everyone has kind of different circumstances and some people work faster than others but for sure if you employ the strategy definitely you're going to finish way faster than otherwise and i i still think for most people if they don't have too many distractions and you pick the right degree and you employ this strategy, definitely finishing in one term is, is doable. 
I'll make the two templates we're looking at available in the description. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you have any comments or feedback or anything, let me know down in the comment section. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. And then I'll cover how to quickly pass the performance success.